Good morning everyone out there in YouTube land. My name is Jared and this is my channel Mazda B3K. In this video we're going to start a series on rebuilding the entire braking system in my brother's 1993 Ford F250 named Ty. And in this particular video we are going to be replacing the master cylinder and the brake booster. Without further ado, let's get started. All right, if you've seen my other master cylinder replacement video for my F250, my 2001, this is gonna be similar, but we have different sizings. So this is a 7 16 This is a 5 8 I believe, yep. And for this, because we don't know when the last time it was removed, we're definitely using a flare wrench. That's what they look like. Sometimes they're called a brake wrench or a line wrench. But there you go. So we're just gonna get on it. There we go, and it needs to go towards the firewall, that'll be loosened. There it goes. And make sure that when you break it loose that you don't see this line twisting. Because it sometimes will stick and it will absolutely twist off on you and then you're in a world of hurt. So, this one broke loose. Let's see if we can get the, the one in the back to break loose. So this is 7 16th. There it goes. Very good. All right, both are broken loose, so we'll just worry. We'll get those out. We're not worried about the brake fluid. We got plenty, and I don't have really a way to drain that, so it's just going to sit on my concrete until it evaporates. If you've got a turkey baster or something similar, you can just kind of slurp everything out so you don't make as big a mess. So we want maximum wiggle room whenever we go to pull the booster out. So we're going to go ahead and remove the master from the booster. It's held in with two nuts that are on studs. And they are 9 16 So get those out and then you should just wiggle the master a little bit and it'll pop loose. And then that'll be that. And then the next step is we got to take some stuff off the booster on this side. And then we got to loosen some stuff in the floorboard behind the brake pedal on the inside in the cab. So now we have to move to the interior, right? Yes, the last thing that needed to be done over here was to pull the vacuum line for the booster, which you already did. So now we got to go to the inside. There should be a couple of nuts that are holding this in on the firewall that we're going to have to contort and loosen. And then this whole thing should come out. All right. First things first, to separate the booster from the pedal, we need to remove the brake on-off switch. And essentially, to remove the brake on-off switch, there's a cotter pin, which is that red thing right there, that we got to pull out. And once the cotter pin's pulled out, we can just slide the switch off. It sits on top of the rod coming from the booster, so it'll slide the rod and the switch off. We get the switch to the side, the rod's detached, and then... After that, we can actually work on removing the booster proper. All right, so that's your brake on off switch. And there's the post that it sits on, the hole where the cotter pin goes. And there's the end of the booster rod. I've got the pedal in front of it so that the pedal's not going to get in our way. And so let's take a look a little further what we need to do now. You can only see two of them right now because of the angle, but there are four nuts that sit on studs that we've got to remove. You can see two of them right there. I'm pretty sure there are 9 16 Get all four of them out and then you can wiggle the booster forward and out. All right, Jordan, go ahead and pull it. Yeah, so as you can see, you pull it forward and there you go. Booster out. Quick blurb here, in case you do not get another this part with your new booster, you do need to transfer this. But we'll go ahead, I'll get the new booster out, give you some part numbers, and we'll go ahead and start working on installing it. Alright, we've got our new booster here, and I've gone ahead and put this plastic collar piece on the new booster. And also, interest of disclosure, there were two tags on it. One that said, if you don't see a check valve on this thing, the warranty is void. This is a new check valve. 
and another one that said if you do not install a properly working master cylinder the warranty is void so these are both good things to remember another good thing to note is when you put this in if your brakes still don't feel quite right and you've got everything bled this rod is adjustable we generally don't want to go down that rabbit hole unless there's no other choice so just keep that in your back pocket as we move along with this installation and get everything ready all right, so what we're going to do here is you're going to see my brother shove the booster back through. And I'm going to get this pedal probably up and out of the way. And then we're going to have to just put the nuts back on and do the reverse of the disassembly we did a little bit earlier. So he's got it through. He's got to get the post to line up. Hang on, wait, wait, wait. All right, guys, got it all back together after tightening everything up. Now, when you go to install the brake on off switch, you see that the outside part of that switch is a half circle. The inside is a full circle. So how this works is you have to slide the brake on off switch onto the post that's on the brake pedal first. And then before you slide it too far, you have to swing up the ring from the brake booster and then slide that onto the post and snug it up in the middle of the brake on off switch, all kind of in one move. And once you have that done, you slide it all the way in until you can see the hole at the end of the post, slide in your retention pin, your hitch pin, and you're good to go. So brake booster installation is done on the inside of the cab. Okay, so one thing that we just learned about the Master as we're preparing to install the new one is that it actually has this detachable, I guess, flare fitting. And it goes right there on the for the fitting that is closest to the brake booster when installed. There is an O-ring that came in the kit with the new master so get this cleaned up get your o-ring on there and then tighten it in i'm not sure what size this is because i just use my bench vise to knock it loose but you should be able to get a wrench on this or even a socket and get it loose so after some quick checking to make sure that this was going to be on there firm and tight I uh, used a 22 millimeter wrench to do that. It probably is an SAE fitting, but 22 was close enough to get the job done. So there you have it guys. That is the assembly put back together. Remember it's 9 16 to mount the master back on the brake booster. And then it is a 7 16 for our line that goes into the fitting there and then it's a 5 8 for the guy that goes in at the end so that should do it for this particular repair where we were replacing the booster and the master so i call this a good repair one caveat though normally at this point you would need to bleed the master cylinder to get the air out of it so it can do its job you can do that with doing normal bleeding that you do in a vehicle where you fill it with fluid, you let stuff go down to the wheels, you crack the bleeders and get the air out that way. We're not doing that right now because we're completely redoing the brakes all the way around. So we're going to be disconnecting brake lines and there's no point in filling this up and then wasting brake fluids. But I do that in a couple other videos and I can make a quick little five minute fix video on how to bleed a master, how to bleed your brakes, and that'll take care of this. All right, guys, that's gonna do it for our remove and replace on our power brake booster and our master brake cylinder for this 1993 Ford F-250 named Ty. Please leave me a comment. I like to read them, I like to respond to them, and I like to learn from them. Please also like, share, subscribe, hit the bell, do all those fun YouTube things for this video. Helps grow the channel. And lastly, remember, 
I make the mistakes so you don't have to. I'll see you guys next episode.